And I'm now pleased to yield to uh, Mr. Armstrong for opening remarks. Thank you, Chairman. Um, and I want to say a deep heartfelt thanks to you personally, the judiciary staff, and most importantly, the members who have taken the time to come to North Dakota to hear these stories. Uh, it's really, really important. And as we all know, uh, particularly those of us who live here, uh, we very much appreciate it when we have the opportunity to tell our story to people who might not understand it. And we do everything we can to make you feel like Grand Forks is your home, like North Dakota is your home. But we also recognize uh, we're all busy, uh, you're all busy, and it's not the easiest place in the world to get to. So we really, really appreciate uh, the opportunity to do this. And I'm really excited about the witnesses we have here today. Uh, I have known most of them for as long as I've been in politics and some of them even before. And I think that's a good example of what we deal with on the northern border. Because another lifetime ago, the Attorney General was a U.S. Attorney for the state of North Dakota. Uh, I was a wet behind the years young criminal defense attorney in Grand Forks. And I think 15 of my first 20 public defender cases in federal court were illegal reentry cases. Um, those existed back in 2003. The first time I ever appeared in federal court was in front of Magistrate Seneschal on a detention hearing. But the difference is they were detained. Uh, they were detained. And that is no longer the case. That is no longer the policy. And that is why the structural difference under this administration from prior administrations is so important. Fast forward a lot longer, probably two summers ago, I, I had the opportunity to meet with uh, the Grand Forks County Sheriff, who is not a witness but is here today, and I asked him what his top three issues were. And he said, fentanyl, fentanyl, fentanyl. He gave me his top three issues, they were all the same thing. And you can't be farther away from the southern border than Grand Forks. Uh, we're 70 miles from the Canadian border. In every single community across the state of North Dakota, somebody is getting is dying from fentanyl poisoning. A hundred percent of those fentanyl pills are made by the cartels in Mexico. A hundred percent. We oftentimes get into this conversation about whether they're coming in by ports of entry, between ports of entry, U.S. citizens, non-U.S. citizens, all of those different issues. Uh, but we lose sight of the fact of the very simple, simple fact that they're all made by the cartels and they're all in our communities. So I don't particularly care how they're getting here. I want it to stop. Um, you're going to hear from four witnesses who have been dealing with these issues uh, from a law enforcement standpoint. And with all due respect to my law enforcement witnesses, uh, I think I'm really excited for Ms. Davis being here. Because what gets lost in this conversation is a community that shares a border with Canada, shares friends and family with Canada, has a tremendous amount of economic activity, whether it's at a retail store in the mall in Grand Forks, or it's trying to get a grain truck across, or maybe just going to your sister's kid's birthday party after 5 p.m. And we've introduced legislation to open the, uh, to re revert the hours at our border crossings back to pre-COVID levels. Uh, but do you know how frustrated a farmer on the northern border is, is when, they can't, uh, when they can't cross over after a certain period of time and then they turn on the news and they see what's happening at Eagle Pass? Uh, so I'm really excited that, we, that you all have the opportunity to hear not just about the stressors and the pressures that law enforcement is facing, that our communities are facing, but also that our, our legal commerce is facing because of really bad policy decisions by this administration and a diversion of resources which are necessary to put a band-aid essentially on a gunshot wound at the southern border and really really is disallowing North Dakota and Canadian business uh, business businessmen and women farmers on both sides of the border and friends and family from actually engaging in the types of activity that they have been able to do their entire adult lives until uh, this administration through really terrible and I think in sometimes intentional policy has taken that away from them. So thank you all for being here. Uh, I, hope, I hope we uh, take this seriously. It's a serious issue. It's a seri uh, there's a reason that uh, we wanted to do this hearing here and I'm glad that my uh, North Dakota constituents and law enforcement officers get to tell your story. Thank you. <laughs>